Have you seen this video on TikTok with the chickens freezing in place? What? Oh my goodness. There's this video of this girl. She's like, I'm like obsessed right now with like farm animal TikTok. Why? People who take care of their farm animals. Or like the piece of me, it? Like especially the sassy ones. Like there's a few, mm. few sassy ones that are out there like, come on, Rebecca, talking to the cow. Oh, right, right, right. So funny. Right. But this one girl was literally just out there with her chickens. And then she was like, come on, guys, come on, whatever. And they freeze. It's like four chickens. They freeze in place and don't move for maybe like three minutes. And then all of a sudden, boom, weirdly snap out of it. And then she was like, have y'all ever seen a glitch in the Matrix before? And it literally looks like time stopped for a second. And they're like mid-walk and literally just all froze at the exact same time. It's on video. And she's conveniently recording the whole thing? Yes. Mm. But I'll show you the video and it looks real, I promise. There's no way you could fake that. No. It's impossible. No. Wow. But it's not what you think, though. It's not like a still frame. She's walking around actively, like, moving the camera, and they're not moving. But did she, she caught the, come on, guys, while they were moving on The camera? whole thing was happening, like a normal video. She was literally just going to film herself feeding the chicken. And so she said, and they froze. And she was like, what the hell is going on? And then she's like, guys, come on, blah, 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 trying to, like. I know exactly what the goddamn's going on. No. Yeah. No, no. Yep. You're going to deny nope. that this happened? Nope. I know. There was a blood bender near. There was a blood bender near. That would explain it. Real quick. Maybe her child. Is a blood bender. Yeah. Does she have a child? Do you know? I don't know. Yeah. Her daughter's in the house. <laughs> yeah. That's what was happening. Or another <laughs> chicken was a blood bender. <laughs> But I think that that's what it is. It's like we always want to think, oh, there's a glitch in the Matrix. But really, there could be other powers at play. For those who are watching and don't know the reference, it's a reference to Avatar The Lost Airbender. Mm -hmm. I like speak like that with so many of my friends that I like forget that that's like not common speech. Right. Look it up. <laughs> there it is. Enjoy it. Woo. There it is. How are you feeling with your tiredness? I'm tired. Really? Why? <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. Maybe because we just got back from doing, what was it, seven days yep. of camp writing? Mm -hmm. Drove back to LA in the dead of night mm -hmm. with no sleep. Yep. Went to a music video shoot. That we were in. That we start in for 10 hours. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's why I'm tired. That could be it. I don't know. Yeah. And we, now we're in bed filming another episode. I know, right? We had a 9 a.m. writing camp that ended up, we ended up getting in bed, I think, at like 11.30 p.m. the following day. And we were straight awake the whole entire time. And we were in a different state. That was the funniest part. Yeah. And I thought, I thought we were going to leave Phoenix at like 4 p.m. I was wrong. We left after midnight, drove the whole way back to L.A. From um, midnight right? to and 6 a.m. Yep. I had to freaking dye my hair because it was green at that point. Yeah. And full glam before. Yeah. Show up, shoot a whole ass video. I honestly thought, too, I thought the video was only going to be a couple hours, like before. I had a feeling, too. I was, well, I was just thinking, like, we were probably going to be done pretty quick. Yeah, and yeah, we were yeah. Gonna, like, peace out. Yeah, I didn't know it was going to be 7, 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. I think it 9 was. 9 a.m. was our call time. Oh, that part. Yeah. Anyways, but I feel a little better now. Well, we slept. Last night. We got night. a good night's sleep. We had sleep. one night of sleep. And I slept good. I slept good. I slept real good. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. But, I mean, it doesn't negate the fact that we're on a real crazy schedule right now trying to prep for this album. Right. Good girl. We have a secret to tell you guys. And I just spilled the beans. And you did spill the beans, but not not all of it. And I think we can go into full details now that we're almost there. Let's do it. Let's talk about it. Okay. In a few days, a few short days, dun, 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 dun. on January 1st, Daddy Mommy 
will be launching an amazing new project. And it involves music. It is an album. But not at all, because we will be giving you guys, and you're hearing it here first. We're not announcing this on anything else. No, this is only for the children. Yep. The faithful, the loyal. Yep, just for the faithful and the loyal. And the on time. Amen. Faithful and the loyal and the on time. We will be releasing a song every single week of 2024, starting January 1st. Ah! We don't have a screen <laughs> button, so I'll just we make the sound. But we also have this. That's fair. And we also have this. That's right. Period. Yep. And I feel like it's time for us to talk about it a little bit. We've been keeping that shit in under I mean, wraps. For anybody who just heard that, yeah. let me just let me just say it again because yeah. it's actually crazy. Yeah. We are releasing one song for every single week of the year next year. Yep. Every single week. And we know better than to try to do that on the fly. Mm-hmm. So we're not just like making a new song every week. Right. We have started to write and record these songs. Right. And I, I mean, yeah, it's been a lot of work. It's been a lot of work. We've already, work. we've already put a year into it. Yeah. At this point, just to start the launch. Yeah. And I feel like you know maybe you guys will find it interesting, maybe you won't, but I think we can get a little bit granular about how this project came to be. Yeah. And like why we're doing it, and <laughs> just like what what's up? Why? Because I just <laughs> the, the main question people probably have no, is no like why? why? No, but I just <laughs> feel like I feel like for people who don't understand like how making music works. Like, I feel like if, especially like if I was younger, I'd be like, oh yeah, you just make a song, whatever. Like, I don't think people understand how much work it is to like actually do that part. Sure. And then like on top of it, like launch it. And I, and I think that like, because of the way social media works, like we don't have a lot of opportunity to, to talk about like the emphasis on how many songs it is or like how we got to this point. But like, that's the good news about a podcast, bitch. That's true. We can talk. We can talk about it. Yes. Because we probably won't. <laughs> no, actually, we probably won't. You're yeah, right. Unless yeah. we somehow get pulled in for an interview. Yeah, with somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. So and I'm like, this is the interview of this us. This is the one time. Yeah. Oh, we can interview ourselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those vain little chickens over here. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> yeah. But no, I think it is, it's funny because even just with what we do. Yeah. I think people have a lot of questions. Yeah. And I definitely, like, anytime I post a video about a song that I've worked on that's been popular, like, so many people ask the question, like, how how did that happen? How did you get that opportunity? Or or how did you start writing? Or can you tell us more about the process? And, like, it's something we don't talk about. At all? No. Especially not on the show. No. Yeah, I'm like, eh. Yeah. Eh." Well, it's also because, like, this is our escape. It's true. <laughs> from from that. It's so true. Which turned into it. <laughs> so true. Again. But yeah, we started uh, unintentionally. I'm going to give you credit and say you came up with the idea to do this. So when yeah. did the idea hit you and was it inspired by anything in particular? Yes. It was inspired by slaying the fuck down. <laughs> <laughs> also because we can. And and I just feel like it's just it's it's an incredible feat once it is accomplished. Mm. Um, I just think it's going to be great and awesome and amazing. But basically, we've had this idea probably in the shower, not together. Um, I was probably in the shower or at the <laughs> gym. Probably the shower. I take more showers than I go to the gym, though. I'm, I'm gonna give credit to the shower <laughs> okay. on this one. And I was like, what? What what's stopping us? I was just I feel like music had turned in, it has turned into content mm. like more than it used to be because it used to be like a lot less people could break as artists because it was like all controlled by the major label system yeah and there wasn't really a chance to be an independent artist so like before people were funneling funneling a lot of money into one song and you did a proper rollout and like you ended up becoming big via the fact that there really wasn't that much competition because there couldn't be because of how much money it costs to put into one artist. Yeah. Whereas nowadays it's way quicker and there's so many people and it's saturated in songs. The The length of time a song does well is also a lot shorter than it used to be. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's just in this market. I mean, even if you think about K-pop, like a, a U.S. song structure is usually, a song can last almost a year to two in the U.S., uh, performance wise like even in Korea it's like six months mm. maybe a year if it's like huge 
So things just roll really quickly. So I just kind of hit this point where I was like thinking, I was like, wow, music is really turned into content. Mm. Like in a lot of ways. And, and, and it's weird because it's actually always been content. I just think we call it art. It can be artful. Sure. For sure. There's an yeah. art form to music. But at the end of the day, overall, it's entertainment and it's content. And then we, Rachel and I, as writers, I mean, we're writing, I want to say, near 365 songs a year already. Probably. Like, we were already doing that for other people mm -hmm. um, here and there, not to the degree where they're all getting finished and put out. That's a whole other part of it. Mm -hmm. But we, 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 we be doing this. We be writing. We be writing. Mm -hmm. And the idea just kind of like came and I, <laughs> and this is why I got to thank Rachel because <laughs> I brought it up and I said, digest this. <laughs> you're going to think I'm crazy, <laughs> but you're probably going to say, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then it, and then it kind of came to be, and I think that we've just done it in a, such a planned way that it never became overly daunting mm. or, or I've never been felt, I've never felt during it that we're scrambling. And that's no. why I think all the songs are so good is yeah. because there wasn't anything put, there was no pressure on it. You know what yeah. I mean? There hasn't been. It's just been like, we're just making songs because we want to make what we want to hear. Well, and the best part about it is we didn't talk about it. Yeah. I think there's also added pressure when you tell people that you're working right. on something. Then all of a sudden you feel the pressure to like, oh, let's make it something that people are going to want to listen to. Right. But you're absolutely right. We just made what we wanted right, to make. Right. And I feel like it's been so much fun. Yeah. It's been tiring. So tiring. Because just because we, for those who are curious about the process, like yeah. we, we did it a week at a time, essentially. Basically, yeah. So like with that being said, it's like those weeks that we've dedicated to working on the album. Right. Have been like long days. Long because days. Because we're like, really yeah. working on making these records great. Right. Because we know. We have to have this many of them. Right. And it's like, you don't want to sit there and half, half finish something. Right. Or like throw a weak idea in there because you know that like at the end of the day, you're trying to get enough records. Right. To meet the goal. Yeah. So like. And we're full recording them. That's the other thing. Recording. A lot of studio sessions out here. It's like, you'll record the whole song, but like you maybe you're not going to do all the harmonies and ad libs and details. And, nah. and we, we go in. We go in yeah, slash yeah. also like even on the days where we're so tired. Yeah. It's like you have to deliver a good vocal. You got to. Because it's going to come out. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and it's not cute to sit there and like, like sometimes on a demo, you know, you might mumble through a right. song or like not give it its full energy because you know, okay, somebody else is going to sing this later. Like right. whatever. Right. We don't have time for that. Oh, yeah. We don't have time for yeah. that. And we'd be going to like 3 a.m. at least every day. Like some of these songs, <laughs> when people hear them, you're probably going to think these must be the most energetic, crazy people you've ever met <laughs> in your life. And the truth is we were half asleep with like, I'm just picturing myself like, actually one of the things I thought about at the last camp <laughs> is I just remember how there was a time in my life where I was so insecure about not having makeup on and not looking like presentable. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you've seen me now at like my grimiest. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not that bad. Because we're there at two, yeah, two, yeah. three in the morning trying to give the performance of yeah. a lifetime. Yeah. And and we do. Dying. And we do. We Listen, do. It's a lot. Yeah. It's a lot. But it's it's been it's been like you said, I think we've we really planned it and we took our time and tried yeah. to like do it in a way that was the most efficient for yeah. us. And I think it's helped, like you said, take a lot of the stress out of it. But yeah. also, I feel like I feel the need to talk about the nature of the songs. Oh. <laughs> because I think that Without spilling too much. Without spilling too much, I do think that something that's really interesting when you work in music and when music is your job mm -hmm. is it's really easy for a lot of a lot of music to become very boring and monotonous to yeah. you. And I think that us making the music that we wanted to make is making music that's fun. Right. Making music that like gives you, like you said, that entertainment level that right. like I think we both maybe grew up seeing a lot more of and also like as people who create music all the time don't get to create right. actually very often. No, we don't. It's like, I think it's kind of interesting and, and maybe this is like due to just the state of the world and what we like went through with the pandemic and everything. But I do think a lot of the music that we work on is like, it's either rooted in deep feelings or comes from like some like struggling 
place. Like I think a lot of people come into sessions and are like, yeah, they want to write songs sometimes that are like up tempo, but right. like, I don't know. I think it's rare almost. Yeah. It does yeah. feel rare, especially stuff that you would want to like dance to or yeah. stuff that you like think is fun just because it's fun and you're not taking it too seriously. Like right. that I think is super rare because I do think everybody really puts a lot of pressure on themselves right. to like, either deliver a certain sound or to give a certain story or right. to provide certain lyrical content that's like, this is amazing. Right. And I think that whilst there is absolutely a place for that in the market and there are tons of people who want to listen to that, I think for us, especially as writers, it's like, it's so refreshing and so exciting to work on something that's like just purely creative. Yeah, that's how I would sum this up. Yeah. It's been... It's a very, it's actually like the first like major creative project I think that I've gotten to do because there's no boundaries because it's new also. Yeah. That's the other thing. It's like, we just don't, we never had the pressure of making it any certain thing because it doesn't exist yet. Right. Well, and like, for again, for the listeners, yeah. put yourself in the position of somebody who like, I don't know, say you bake all the time and like, then you're given the cha challenge of like creating your own recipe and coming up with something that feels like fresh to you. Right. Like you get to make you get to make a is it cake kind of cake. Yeah, yeah, you can make so many things. Yeah. But it's like it's really fun because it's like as soon as you're off the recipe book. Right. You know, it's like there there are no limits. Right. You can say whatever, do whatever. And yeah. it's so freeing and so fun. No, it's been great. And it's almost like funny because it's it's like I, when I first started writing, I would have never written any of the songs we're writing, even like song mathematically. Like I, I would have never done any of this. I would have been like, we need to follow the rules. Yeah. And now I'm like, it's almost like you have to have written for so long to be able to make something that's this carefree. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's kind of wild. Yeah. And it's like after, at least for me, yeah. after maybe like, goodness gracious, I'm like scared to count. I want to say after like five, five years. No, my last like solo, solo release oh. was like, like as an artist Yeah, was technically, I think end of, end, end of 2020, end of 2019. Important. Yeah. It was like 2019, I think. It might've been, it was my, it might've been December of 2019 or January yeah. of 2020 actually. Right. But I mean, yeah. So maybe four years ago. Yeah. And, and even before like, that, you didn't do anything. And there was a gap. Yeah, yeah, there was a gap before that. And like, like I definitely don't feel like I had even thought about doing an artist project. Yeah. In, okay, so let's let's say, wow, I'm really counting here. Seven years. Yeah. I think it's been seven years. Yeah. That's crazy. And here we are. And here we are. And here we are. You brought a bitch out of retirement. I know, right? Key. Right? No, and it's We brought so, our producer out of retirement. Yeah, too. literally. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Oh my gosh. But it's, it's, yeah, it's crazy because I think one of the things I struggled with was trying to like find what I felt like was a solid artist identity. Right. And so like that I think was a big part of why I never like really took it seriously and enough to try to do another project was right. just because I was like writing and working for so many other artists and I couldn't decide like what I wanted to be like my, my sound, my vibe. Right. And I think the main issue with that is, again, you're just taking it so seriously. Right. And it's such a huge piece of your identity that, like, it was, like, I guess paralyzing for me in a way. Just because I was just, like, I, I don't know. what my, Would it be hip-hop? Would it be alternative? Like, what would, it, what would it be? Right. And I think that doing this was so, because it's been so fun and so free. I think that it just is kind of like we just stumbled upon it. We stumbled upon it. We stumbled upon it, it and that's the vibe. Us. And that's no the vibe found it, us. The vibe found us. For sure. Yeah. And it's great because I just I just enjoy it so much that like regardless of what anyone else has to say yeah, about right? it, I'm like, I fucking love it. Right? <laughs> I yeah. love it. Yeah. I love it. I think it's so fun. And our songs, we have so many different styles mixed in. That it, it's funny because it actually incorporates, I think, all of the things that I've worked on as a writer. Right. 
You know, it's like, and maybe more, more than things I've worked on. Cause we tapped into some other no, stuff that's like really, really like, oh. Yeah. I feel like we've tried, be- and that's the freedom of having so many songs to make is it's like you can't be put into a box or a boundary. No. Nah. Like you could play two songs back to back and be like, how do the same people make these two songs? Absolutely. Now we're going to structure it in a way that it makes sense, period. period. That's belief. Yes. But, <laughs> or at least we're going to try our best. Mm-hmm. But it was really, I don't know. We just got to do what we wanted to do and be. I feel like kind of really creative and just uh, once again, I think that we're making the music that we wanted to hear. Yeah. Which I, even in my own self, like I wasn't in retirement, you know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I literally just put an album out and it's so interesting when you're, uh, uh, I mean, just for context, I, obviously I don't think people know, but like I wrote that album was lyrically done and recorded probably in 2020 Mm. it's been done for a while Mm -hmm. it just took a long time to roll it out because of details yeah um but um even that was like a heavy record for for me Mm -hmm. i mean i don't think a lot of people would like think that but for me it was but also it was just like that time in my life whatever and i just felt like mostly i like to have fun Mm mm-hmm and I think I got that deeper record off my chest and then I kind of got back into myself, which coincides way more with this sound. And it's been really fun and freeing because it's like even songs that like, I feel like I had branded myself heavy enough that I felt a f- sense of like afraid to try something really drastically new. Yeah. And then because this is like a brand new project that has no rules and no sound, it's like yeah, I got to do shit that I actually like, like listen to. Cause I don't, it's like weird to say this. I might scratch this from the record, <laughs> but like, I don't necessarily, I haven't always made songs that I would listen to. I think I made songs that I fit my narrative of what I thought I should do. Not all of them. Obviously there's some I like, but I think I slipped few in there that I just thought this was good for the sound. Yeah. Whereas like, this is like, eh, I don't like, I don't typically actually turn on, well, sad songs at all. Yeah. 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 And 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 I like to have fun. No, I feel it. And we'd be having fun. We do be having yeah. fun. So, I mean, we can talk all day about this, obviously. I'm sure obviously. there's a lot of details we're missing out. Oh, also, like, the fact that there's going to be a music video every week. We didn't say that there part There's that. There's mm-hmm. the fact that I sing less. Yeah. So, yeah, so that that's interesting. You'll see what that means. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, very interesting. It's very interesting. Yeah, I just, I don't know. I definitely hope people get into it, but I do think as somebody who makes a lot of music, mm-hmm. these songs are so much fun. So much fun. If anything, I think that's the takeaway. Yeah. <laughs> I think they're fun and I think they're well-crafted. They're fun and they're well-crafted. Yeah. Great to listen to. And we be working. It's a good time. We put a lot of work we into put it. a lot of work into it. It looks, a lot of it's going to come across as silly. Yeah. And you might think, oh, they probably spent no time on this. I guarantee you we did. <laughs> we did. And we thought about, like, listen, listen, a lot of the lyrics, and, and I think you're going to know what they are because of some things that are going to be in the pipeline. Mm-hmm. They're witty. It actually takes, it's weird. It takes a lot more effort to write, like, a, a silly witty song than it does to write something that sounds more heartfelt. Because you actually need less details and less metaphors Mm -hmm. and more just like kind of colorful words Mm -hmm. in that. And then this, it's like you have to just, it's like you're creating way more imagery Mm -hmm. than you would. Mm -hmm. And like even bringing in like elements of pop culture into it, which you wouldn't if you were doing like a more serious record. Yeah. Yeah. And I really think like... Not to like brag about ourselves too much, but I really feel like it's we kind of show. It is our show, <laughs> but I feel like we kind of create a world with each song. Yeah, and it's so fun because yeah. it's like it's not you're not confined to any particular scenario no. and or story. Yeah, it's like yeah, this is the this is the story for today. This is the vibe. That's the vibe for today, yeah. and that's it. And it doesn't have to be this, and it doesn't have to be that. Yeah. And if you like it, great. And if you hate it, whatever. Yeah, and we make music for pretty people. Period. If you don't like it. Take Take a a hint. hint. (laughs) (laughs) Crazy. (laughs) Crazy. But it's true. Listen, it's, yeah. I mean, it's the type of stuff that, I don't know. We can't say too much about it. I think it's like, you'll have to hear it to understand. I know. We're like a run on sentence about it, but we've been putting a lot of work into it and it's coming. I can't believe it's actually happening. Like, Like I cannot wait to get to like... See people's reactions. No, it's like the songs, the visuals, the videos. We so got much, it, the guys. rollouts up. There's so much. We've been putting in so much work. And I think the other thing too is like, and then I'll stop. Yeah. Because we're like done. <laughs> yeah. But it's just like, 
It's such a weird thing to be putting so much work into something that people know nothing about. Oh, yeah. That's been a secret. Yeah. Like, that's crazy to me. Yeah. Because people have, like, already know me as somebody who works really hard. I think people know you as somebody who works really hard. Yeah. Like, we're not, we're not sitting at home, people. Nah. We're out and about and doing a lot all the time. Right. So to then add a project that is this large to our agenda. Right. And then not tell anybody about it is crazy. crazy. And not to scare all of you guys, the podcast is still coming out. Yes. On top of it. Yes. Yes. No, we're not abandoning the children <laughs> by any means. We're just growing the family. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and honestly, I feel like this is, what's funny about this episode in particular is I feel like this is one that is going to be ripped out again later by somebody else and people will go back to just to hear the origin. Yeah. Because I feel like we're not going to be able to go, I guess, this in depth about the project slash we might not even want to. No, I don't think we're going to want to. Yeah. And I think it's going to be really tough like as people start discovering the songs. Yeah. It's like you can't speak on one song and speak about the project. Like yeah. there's there's just too much. There's, there's a lot. too much. Yeah. But if, you're, but if you're fans of music, fun music, you need a little escapism. It's definitely an escapist project. Yeah, it's an escapist project. For sure. Yeah. And, you know, when you catch me out here dancing, just know I had a good chiropractor that cracked that scully right in place. <laughs> and I learned Listen. how to move my neck a little bit more. That's right. <laughs> that's right. And that's that. Well, yeah. But yeah. And then I think, like, later on, maybe we won't do this today, but I feel like it'd be interesting to, like, break down the marketing behind it. You know, mm. Later on, later, later on, because yes, then you guys will see it. There's a strategy. It's just been interesting because this is the beauty of when you have something you really care about, and it's like not as redundant as being like a solo artist, and you have like a team. You know, because like true. that's another thing I think that people don't know about us is like we don't. I mean, obviously it's people on the publishing side, but like artist wise. For me, too, like, I haven't had a manager in years. You haven't. Like, we we just out here. Yeah. You know, at this point. Yeah. You know, we had some people. Things happened. <laughs> <laughs> now we're here. So now I'm just saying, here. it's like, all. It's like there's nobody else to lean on. I just want y'all to know, <laughs> when you see this, see this shit, just know, we did it. We wish we were industry plants. I would love that so much. Yeah. But unfortunately... <laughs> It's a lot. Unfortunately, of, we <laughs> a personal effort yeah, was a required. There's a lot of personal effort required. A lot of personal effort, but thank God <laughs> we've we've done this long enough. Yeah. To kind of know what what we think is going to work. Well. Right, right. And and last fun fact, and then we're going to move on. I'm going to say something stupid. I'm sure next. Great. But the last fun fact is we've got to shout out our boy Taj Brooks. Have to because not only does he produce this damn show. He produced the whole entire project. Hit it on the board for that boy. Yeah. But I'm not saying this as a compliment. I'm <laughs> saying this as a warning. I want to say this. <laughs> all y'all bitches who are going to try to steal him from us. He's not going to be available until June or July. He's going to be too expensive, <laughs> actually. Yeah. Way too expensive for <laughs> any of you broke bitches <laughs> to afford. Right. But and you I'm know. talking to you, Tate McRae. <laughs> <laughs> Don't try to steal our boy until June or July for fifty thousand dollars a song. At least he'll take maybe some of that. Yeah. But no, I. It's so true. <laughs> a huge, huge MVP. Yeah, that is not seen on camera during the show. Right. We are greatly appreciative, sir. And Daddy Mama would not exist without you. That's real. He's the little true wizard behind the curtain. Ooh. And he'll remain probably behind the curtain. <laughs> <laughs> you almost sounds make believe. But we're here to brag about him. Yeah. So, you know, just like the Wizard of Oz, the hype. It's all about the hype. That's right. Got to hype him up. Got to. Yes. But yeah, no, we've got to get this kid on salary before any of these other bitches try to come for him. Yeah, they will. They will. The songs are too good. That's one fun thing. At least if you say this hop line is something, you can't dog the production. Can't. You can't. You can't. You can hate whatever the fuck we put on top of it. Right. But <laughs> but then beats be hitting. <laughs> Those so, beats be hitting. You know? Regardless. You, you know, know what else is hitting? Hmm? Have you ever heard of Club Applebee's? <laughs> <laughs> That's the segue of the lifetime right there. Um, we just wrapped it up. You said Club Applebee's yeah. as in not the restaurant Applebee's? 
No, as in the restaurant Applebee's. Of course. I, I, my mom used to love, they had this one little shrimp salad. No, you just heard of Applebee's. Yeah. You've never heard of Club Applebee's. That's what I was saying. It's not a club. It's, no. it's around the restaurant, okay. I mean. So did you know that Applebee's had, Applebee's used to be a club? Like a turn up club. Like a turn up club. No way. Yeah. No, I found this out. <laughs> no way. Yeah. So Who there was, was turning up at Applebee's. Oh, okay. So the thing about Applebee's is there was an initiative. So it was is what we knew, Applebee's, but apparently there was a moment where they realized the demographic was only like older people. Okay. And they wanted to make Applebee's younger. So in the okay. after hours, they extended the hours of Applebee's and turned them into nightclubs. No. Yeah. What? And then younger to draw in younger people into Applebee's. But what ended up happening was the old people just stopped eating there because they didn't like that the restaurant was turning into a nightclub and the night yeah. and the younger people didn't go to Applebee's. Yo. So it was a failed experiment. However, I, mean, mm-hmm. I think if it happened nowadays, people would go. Okay. I would go to Applebee's. I feel like that would be a, a turn up, especially if you're still serving food. Yeah. Because I used to love, ooh, that country fried steak. Mm-hmm. With the mashed potatoes. And the Dollaritas. So good. Like, that sounds like yeah. a great time. What club can you go to with the Dollarita? Not a lot. And you know what? Well, you just got me thinking, though, about the whole, like, club to, to restaurant yeah. dynamic. Because I went to brunch at this place that I'd only been to, like, late at night. Mm. And there is something just kind of eerie and off-putting about a place that's, like, a nightlife place mm. in the daytime. That's true. It's like, I just felt like everything was a little bit grimy, even though like the food was decent and the drinks were still really good. Yeah. It just is like, you're like, I'm not supposed to be here right now. Right. Like I, it's, there's a sun shining outside yeah. and this is a club. No, I feel that, especially, you know, where I live. Mm-hmm. I think about that sometimes when I eat at the restaurant. Some of those places, when like I, that one we went to. Yeah, when that I that one we went to, it feels like that is not somewhere people need to be in the daytime. No, yeah. Sometimes if I go there during the day, and then I'll like be walking at night, and you just see somebody like shaking their dick on the table, and you're like, whoa! And I just ate breakfast. I just there. ate breakfast there. <laughs> I just shake in my head. <laughs> no, I've seen crazy. it. That's the craziest part. No, it's crazy. It's such a weird feeling. Yeah. I don't know. I'm like, I definitely think it's like, no, you're lying. If you're a nightclub, be a nightclub. That's dope. I just, the daytime part. I still would go to Applebee's though. But Applebee's, I would, I would try it. I would try it. But like, I will say if it was like, say Applebee's was packed and I'm having to like <clears throat> scrunch up to eat my little chicken fried steak at 2 a.m. <laughs> Nah. That'd be oh, that would be I'm going amazing to Taco for Bale. an after party though. You know, it's like almost Apple like beans? IHOP or like Denny's. You know how you always go there late because it's yeah. open? Imagine huh. if it was like, oh, you go there to eat, but everybody's <laughs> drunk and you also can get drinks. Yeah. Hey. Hey. I'm just saying. But they don't oh, do another, it anymore. Another thing I just saw is did you know that McDonald's is making a spin-off restaurant? Yeah. No. Yeah. So it's called it's called Cosmics. What? Yeah. I did a little research on it. It's a, it's like a, I mean, it is McDonald's branded. Like there's actually like an M in the corner of the, like the logo, but yeah. Cosmics is a breakfast coffee spinoff of McDonald's that's supposed to be competing with like Dunkin' Starbucks. Really? Yeah. Which is interesting because McDonald's does so well with breakfast already. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, they so do. So I'm like, I. Yeah, they do. Yeah, no, they do. Yeah, they do. And people are loyal. So I'm wondering, I'm like, I don't know the exact menu. I know that I saw like frappes, like real coffees and stuff that you wouldn't get, that you would get at like Starbucks or Dunkin' yeah. are now going to be at Cosmics. Ooh. But I'm wondering like, is it going to be the same menu or is it an expansion of it? But it seems like it only does breakfast. Like they're not doing anything but breakfast related stuff. I mean, that's kind of hot. I know. like, raise your hand if you were so excited when McDonald's made their breakfast 24 hours. And keep your hand raised if you were devastated when they went back to limited hours. Mm. What was that about? Probably because they're launching Cosmics. I mean, but it's been a minute. It's been like a minute. Like they literally gave us that and then snatched it right back out of our hands like it was nothing. Yeah. And I was upset. I know other people who were upset. And I'm like, I do think that's such a huge business for them, actually. Like I think the breakfast menu alone draws so many people there. It does. But it's like... What Keep I'm it conf- 24 hours. No, I feel that. But then 
regarding Cosmics, I'm like, is it not going to take away from like the actual McDonald's breakfast? I can see it being a... I mean, they're not going to lose though, right? Because it's 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 essentially the same. No, but maybe they're not losing, but is it is it just shifting? I don't know. I think the menu would have to be significantly different for yeah. it to live in its own lane. Like, I think you'd have to have a couple staples, but not everything. But like, also like, what a sleigh. If I can get my like Starbucks level coffee right. with my McDonald's breakfast sandwich in one place, I'm going to Cosmics. Right. Like, I'm I going. I'm saying this. I'm pretty sure you're sure I'm going to Cosmics. Yeah, no, I'm going. I, it sounds great. Like, however they want to do it. Yeah, like, it's like, <laughs> weirdly, I don't care. <laughs> sign me up. I just know. Sign me up. We'll talk about it on the pod. Like, yeah. I will try yeah. any and all things on your <laughs> menu. Yeah. No, for some, <laughs> one thing I know, I'm going to Cosmics. I'm going to Cosmics. I don't really care what's there, I'm no. thinking. Because the thing is, I trust. I just already, exactly, you already I, trust. I trust. I trust her. That's the word right there. I you know? trust that breakfast menu like yeah. more than a lot of other places. More than anything else. Consistent for how many years of my life? For so many years. So many years I've been eaten. Yeah. And then the thing too, I think, is like living in LA, like we've learned that there's so many places you can go to where they feed you like a mouse and make you pay hundreds of dollars. Oh and then you got to freaking go to McDonald's on the way home because you're starving. Yeah. yeah. Like she's been there. She's been there. She's that girl. And she's consistent. And I think especially when it was 24 hours. Yeah. It's like the fact that I can get the same consistently delicious sandwich any time of day. Clutch. Right. So clutch. What I'm curious about though Speaking of consistencies, you know how Starbucks, like, oh, you wait. get... Er, sorry to curb the conversation real uh. quick. There's only been one McDonald's experience that was not consistent. Should we shout them out? <laughs> oh, my God. This, this is, is an a, honest review. Yep. <laughs> this is a message for you, McDonald's in Buckeye, Arizona. You can go to hell. <laughs> you can kiss <laughs> all of our asses. And let me tell you why. Because we strategically on our road trip pulled up to your ass. After hours, it was past midnight. You were the only 24-hour McDonald's in, in the, the vicinity. Area. Mm -hmm. And that that's something that you got to hold to a higher standard, I feel. Mm -hmm. Okay. First thing, roll up, mobile order doesn't work. We're trying to use our little DC discount code. Okay. Can't get that. Let them know. I I'm going to let them know. Mm -hmm. Next thing you know, we got to struggle through that. Mm -hmm. Then they tell us we got to pay cash mm -hmm. at McDonald's. Cash only at McDonald's. At McDonald's, we got to pay like cash only. Like it's a only. strip club. Yeah. And I'm like, first off, when am I even holding cash on me? Thank the Lord. He always has my back. Amen. Hello. I had a 20. He sure did. Roll up. I see, you know, Mr. Burger himself standing there. Hold him a 20. We get the freaking food. What was it? Cold. Cold. Those fries were the coldest fries I've ever had no. from McDonald's. Yeah. In years. Yeah. I've never had fries served to me cold like that. No, it that. was like the type, like, you know how, like, you order Uber Eats or Postmates? Yes. And then you get the fries, and yes. then, you, like, you just didn't grab the bag in time. Right. Long like that, delivery. That tasted like fries that had yeah. been sitting in the fridge. Right. But usually you can, like, freaking put that shit in the microwave or something. I never have had them hand me the bag. The act, yeah, right. Fresh out the window, right. you're cold. Right. How does that happen? And we had to pay in cash. And oh, no napkins. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And, and we no had napkins. no napkins. We're eating cold fries Did with salty sauce? fingers. We didn't ask for any sauce. But we didn't have that either. We sure didn't. <laughs> but like, that was so disappointing. Devastating. Like, I'm like, it just is crazy because y'all yeah. have an amazing track record. Yeah. And this little location. Yeah. It's gonna mess it up. Yep. I I <laughs> hope the McDonald's and Buckeye turns into a cosmics. Yep. <laughs> I hope y'all have your time. Listen. Yeah. It just was unacceptable. No. Enough, enough that I would leave a phone call to the manager. And this is my version of that. I'm like, I'm so not a person who would like go through any trouble to write like a bad review. Yeah. But like that was exceptionally bad. No, except and we were in the pouring rain and cold. Driving back yeah. on a road trip yeah. in the middle of the night, and y'all gave us cold fries yeah. that we had to pay for with yeah. cash. Yeah. Think with about, no napkins. Think about us. <laughs>
think about us. Yeah, but yeah. anyways, I I agree. Maybe they should just transform into a cosmic location. That's what I'm thinking that's probably where why this idea started. Or an Applebee's or a Club Applebee's. Yeah, something's got to happen. Something's got to change. <laughs> so, anyways, do better. <laughs> no, for real. they really need to do better. Yeah, but that was wonky. I can't. I have a question for you. Okay. This is a very random question. That's fine. But if, say you were married. Oh. <laughs> what you no, I'm not married. Okay. Say you were. I'm not. Say you were married. Okay. Do you feel like it would be weird to tell your best friend that they could either date or marry your spouse after you pass away? Because I just heard this girl say that on this TV show. And I was like. I would say it to my best friend as a test. Oh. Yeah. I wasn't trying to get your reaction. Because mm-hmm. if you're like, oh my God. Yes, I would definitely marry your. What is it? Not an ex when you're dead. Marry your current spouse. I would definitely marry your current spouse. I'd be like, what the fuck? I don't know. You're attracted? I don't know. I'm just saying that's trifling. And also, as the best friend, I would think that shit's rude. You think I'm gonna be single? <laughs> I'm not. I'm that dusty. Damn. Uh, that like is that sloppy seconds? Dusty seconds? I don't even know what that is. I don't know. Kind of makes me sick. Kind of wild. Yeah. I just am like. I think it makes me uncomfortable to think about it. I, it are you sure it's not like one of those things where like, if I ever die, please take care? No, nah, yeah, it my wasn't spouse. that. It wasn't that. It was like, not like you guys, you guys should link if anything were to happen to me. Like sexually? Yeah. It was all wrapped in one little I feel like I've heard of this happening, but just because it's like, you're both grieving together and then that's the common denominator. And then some, I don't understand the whole grieving turning into sex thing. Like, I don't get it. I know some of some people do that. That's how I, <laughs> the, whole not, grieving, I don't want, the grieving to sex pipeline. Yeah, the, the grieving <laughs> to sex pipeline has to be studied because I just don't understand where you're getting the energy. <laughs> when granted, you're supposed to be sad. Right, granted, TMI, I can't dog it because that's how I ended up here. But still, it's a lot. Uh-huh. Huh? <laughs> what? You know I'm a pill baby. But a grief baby? I'm a grief pill baby. No. Yeah, my grandfather died. <laughs> <laughs> Don't laugh. He's dead. Continue. Yep. My grandfather died. Mm-hmm. And then the appropriate reaction by the parents is to do that little handshake they do. <laughs> <laughs> Next thing you know, here I am, fought through the pill, and I came out on top. And you want to guess how my sister got here? More grief. Grandmother died. <laughs> <laughs> no. She fought through the pill no as well. Way. Yep. No way. Yep. I don't know. Yeah. It's like uh, my brain went somewhere dark. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just like, is is death a turn on for people? Like, I'm like, I don't know what that is. In this family, it's something. I'll mm-hmm. say that. I don't know. I don't know if that's too on my. You got to restock. Too- you know, you <laughs> yeah. Yo. Yeah, right? No, that's literally, crazy. I was. No, is that like a genuine genetic thing that just you're like, like people oh. going to funerals to get aroused? No, but maybe it's like if somebody in the family's out, you're just like, oh, we got to replenish it. I don't know. I like, I treat that in the same way that I treat like the whole like makeup sex thing. Uh, if I'm mad at you, I'm mad at you. Like I'm not, I'm not interested right. in being physical with you if I'm mad at you. Right. I don't understand how that's a thing for people. Just being angry makes you excited. I'm like, sounds like something to work on in therapy. Yeah. Well, Side note from that, I mean, I think that some people like being angry and fighting. Like, I think it actually does turn them on and fulfill them. Yeah, I can't relate to that. No, I don't think you can. You're you're very stable. (laughs) (laughs) Mama doesn't like to fight. I really don't. No, but some people love it. Like, genuinely, like, they couldn't be in a relationship without having somebody they can fight. Yeah. Like, they love that shit. I mean, in a way, I understand it because you're, like, you're passionate in an argument. So you're just transferring that passion into something else but like 
I don't know. I guess I'm way too much of a bitter hoe. I'd be sitting there like, Mm-mm, you know what you did. Don't even think about <laughs> it. <laughs> I'm like, no, 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 no. No. Gates closed. Sorry about it. <laughs> but not sorry. But no, some people are really into it. And apparently some people are into, you know, creating babies amidst deaths in the family. Yeah. It's interesting. Yep. Sorry to air that out, but it's true. <laughs> You added the pill on top of it, which also was not related, but... Oh, but it's still true. It's a part of your story. It's part of my story. Congratulations, you're persistent as hell. Mm-hmm. It's the only time I've ever been quick in my life. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> nowadays, I would say that I would rather be hot and late than early and ugly. Mm-hmm. I would never show up to anything on time if I'm not ready and put together. Mm. That's just the truth. Mm. Some people, they're going to show up on time, maybe even a little early, sacrifice a shower. Sacrifice a little hair brushing. Mm. And they're going to roll up on it. Mm. What would you do? I mean, I'm on time and I look good. <laughs> <laughs> Not that part. <laughs> I'm sorry. I planned to get dressed and to shower and do all the things so I could show up on time. What if you didn't have time? Well, I'm not, gonna, to I'm not going to come. It. I'm not going to come like with like yeah. my hair and makeup undone. Yeah. You, uh-huh. you don't have a lot of time in this scenario. You can either show up on time. Okay, so I have or, to make a choice. Either yeah, yeah, show yeah. up on time or come late. Yeah. Put together. Yeah. Okay, then yeah, I'm coming late. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Some people just throw up in a bun with the crusties out, little unibrow going on, mm. roll up to the event. Mm. Couldn't be me. And that's on I God. understand that. I understand that. Yeah. For sure. I don't. No, no, I understand why you understand the opposite oh when you say it couldn't be me i understand what you're saying couldn't but, be me. yeah i never i'm never i never calculate how long it takes to get ready i actually really don't know how long it takes for me to get ready i should time that i once. can't with like some of y'all i ain't gonna say names <laughs> <laughs> i'm really shocked that that still hasn't hasn't revealed itself here's how long it takes me to get ready if yeah. i need to leave by this time to be here by this time I need to make sure I have this amount of time to get ready. Some people really don't have a concept of that. And it really is shocking to me. Do you know me. how long it takes you to get ready? Yes. I know exactly how long. Like, how? Typically for me, if we're talking about just like a regular, like I need to get like sh- brush my teeth, make sure I've washed my face, put my makeup on plus an outfit and get out the door. Yeah. I can do all of that. Minimum 20 minutes. What? Typically 30. Oh, so you're just quick. I'm quick with it, but that's because I know myself and I know my routine. I feel like bitches be acting like they don't do the same thing every time to get ready. And then all of a sudden are shocked that it took them this amount of time. You know. I know, know, but I don't know how you can do all that in 30 minutes because I couldn't even do that in 30 minutes. That's without a shower. I'm not factoring in a shower. It's like literally if I'm just washing my face, brushing my teeth, doing my makeup and an outfit. You can do a full beat and, and... I can do my face now. I literally can do it in like 15 minutes max. Really? Yes. It's quick. I can't even. That's why I'm like, what are bitches doing in the bathroom? I can't even get my hair to dry with a blow dryer in that amount of time, I think, anymore. No. I mean, it's just like, I mean, I also, I know my quick styles. If I had an hour to get ready, maybe I might do something more with my makeup, do something more with my hair. But most of the time, it's 30 minutes. Really? And so I, I'm always shocked, especially when the men in my life are taking way longer than me to get ready. I'm sitting there like, what are y'all doing? I can there? tell you, though. Mine yeah, takes what a is while. Happening? What's happening? Okay, so there? first off, I'm probably always going to shower. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't see myself not. Mostly because, like, my hair is probably fucked up. Because mm-hmm. it's always changing colors. Not publicly. Publicly, always blue. Behind the scenes, it turns green sometimes. <laughs> and that's when you wear a hat. Uh-huh. But I have to get it. I have to take a shower. If you wanted to, hold on. Let's go full routine from the green. Okay. I have to dye my hair. That takes a minimum 30 minutes. Okay. If well, I had to factor that in. I feel like let's let's go for just a regular okay, day. Okay, a regular day. Okay. Regular day, hair is already all right. Okay, so I have to take a shower. Mm-hmm. How I, long does it take you to shower? Oh, I don't really know. But <laughs> I want to say... <laughs> I hate that I, so I feel much. like I can't. I wish it took I five can't. minutes, but I feel like it takes 15. 
Okay. I like a shower. You're giving honesty. I didn't know that this was such a heave of mine, but I'm really feeling it. Oh, no, you are. But I'm going to tell you honestly. Continue, continue. So you shower for maybe 15 minutes, maybe more. Yeah, no, more. because it has to be. It, there's no way it's five because I've been shaving in the shower now. Okay. Yeah, because I've learned that over the years. I didn't know why. I didn't know this before, probably because my father never taught me how to shave. But when you take a shower. Opens up your pores. Opens up the pores. Yeah. It's so much easier than showering before because I don't want to shave after the shower. Because the bitches are tight. No, it's not that. It's oh. that because then I have shaving cream all over fucking me and I got to wipe my face off and I could just do it in the shower. Oh, I understand. Because I got a mirror there now. I understand. Okay, so I'm shaving in the shower. Shit's, that shit's taking a minute already because, you know, I have that beard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, and then I got to do my little, you know, you got to leave the conditioner, you got to shampoo, and you got to leave that conditioner in for a little bit because my hair is fucking wire if I don't do that because of all the bleaching. Okay. Okay, so yeah, I would say at least 15 minutes we're in the shower. Probably more. Probably it sounds like more. it's more than that. Uh -huh. Maybe 20. Maybe 30. No, 30 is crazy. But I could time it and it could be 30. But it's probably 15. Okay. 20 maybe. Okay. Then I have to get out. Then I have to dry my hair. And then it takes... So you, you do a full blow dry. Yeah. Well, if I'm going somewhere, if, like for real. You know, if, I, like, if my hair is going to be done like today, you know. like You're looking at a blow dry. You're looking at a blow dry. Okay. I could air dry it, but like that's going to take hours. So I'm like, this is a quick, but the thing is, it's like when my hair is like super bleached, like right now my hair is like really blue. It's not just like the tips. It just holds the water. Like I cannot get it out. Mm -hmm. So I'm not, it's not quick. Like I'm fucking blow drying my how, hair. If you had to guess, how long do you think the blow drying takes? I think my hair blow drying takes, I can't even say 10 minutes. It might take like, no, you don't have to be shy about it. Like how much? No, I just I'm like thinking about it. I don't know. I really am now I'm learning. I should time myself just at one time to see like how how long this actually takes. So fascinating. I think okay. my hair. I I don't know. It might take 15 minutes for it to fully dry. Okay. Yeah. So now we're at 30, right? I mean, it's sounding to me like your shower probably takes closer to 20 to 30. So I'm going to lean on the side of more. <laughs> okay, so you think I'm at so 30. So you're at 30 with the shower. 20 with the hair. And 20 with the hair. So okay. you're almost at an hour. So I'm at 50 minutes mm -hmm. and my hair looks electrocuted because then I have to go in. Because, because okay, just for context, like my hair is naturally curly. But when you bleach it, it's it's a mixture of curly and straight now. It looks like electrocution. It's like a zigzag. Texture is off. Yeah, it's off. Got so it. I have to use heat on my hair for it to look like to my style hair. style it the way yeah, you yeah. want to style it. Mm -hmm. So then I got to go through and do that. I want to say that that takes 10 minutes. So we're going to say That's probably like part. 15 to be safe. Okay, so we're at an hour. So we're at an hour five. Five. Okay. Then I have to put my, uh, my coochie cream on <laughs> my face. I use coochie cream on my face. Huh? I use coochie cream on my face. What cream? Oh my gosh. I have, the, well, because I used to shave and I would get razor burn always like yeah. on my face. And then I got this thing called PFB, which is for your vagine. Oh. And so I put, <laughs> no. I've used PFB before. Yeah, so then I put my coochie cream on my face and it's the, I've never broke out ever again after that. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm pretty sure that this bottle just says it's an ingrown hair serum, so it can be used on multiple no, parts, I think not it's just your coochie. I feel like it's as bikini something. I mean, that's a place where you get ingrown hairs, but I think you can use it anywhere you get ingrown hairs. Well, clearly, I use it on my face. Period. But the, no, but even the dermatologist told me, he's like, yeah, this is actually for the cooch. Fascinating. But use it on your face. All right. Yeah. Well, period. Little life it hack. works. It does work. It's a great product. Yeah, little life hack in the middle there. It's if a great you're product. a guy who shaves and breaks out, use PFB coochie cream. Or if you're a person who gets ingrown hairs... In your bikini or anywhere else, yeah. it's a great product. PFB, it, it eats. Yes. Okay, but I do PFB, then she kind of... That takes like what, two seconds. Yeah, but she stings. She so does we have sting. To, we have to think about that. Uh-huh. Like, uh. Yeah. Then I use my super goop sunscreen. Mm-hmm. And then I use Charlotte Tilbury's Magic Cream, most hydrating lotion I've ever used in my life. <laughs> this is not an ad. <laughs> this is not an ad. But I when, I when I stand by something, I stand by it. All right. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. So to do all of your creams and creams and serums, how long do you think that takes you? That's probably like five minutes. Okay. Ten. Okay. Five. So, so Aaron, on the done. side of caution, yeah. we're now at one fifteen. Hour right. fifteen. Right. Continue. What else? Then the gua sha comes out. 
Okay, you guasha every day? Well, I okay, I roll in the morning. Okay. I don't guasha in the morning. I guasha at night because that shit takes too for? long. Probably, well, I do 30 swipes a, a part of my face because I get really puffy. So, yeah, 30 here, 30 here, 30 here, 30 here, and then 30 under my eyes. Mm-hmm. So that's probably 10 minutes. Okay. I think. Okay. <laughs> a bit. Okay, so we're almost at an hour and a half. Okay. So I think at that point, if I wasn't going to be on camera, I would be pretty much done. Pero if you're going to be on camera, what do you do? What Pero else? if I'm going to be on camera, then I have to fix my eyebrows. What do you do? You pluck, you cut. No, they're going to be plucked already. Like that'll be in the mix of this. Like you gel. What do you yeah, do? I got to gel them down because they're crazy. Okay. So I got to gel them down. So we'll add like five minutes left because it's at an hour 30. Right. Especially because the gels suck on mine. My eyebrows are so dark, so the little crusty. So you got to gel it and then you got to pick the crusties out. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then, oh, I have to shave my nose hairs <laughs> because they come out. This is long. I mean, even talking about this is a long story. This is a long, it takes a long time. How long do you think it takes you to do the nose hairs? <laughs> a minute. Easy. So five, so an hour 35. We're at an hour 35. Whoa. Okay, <laughs> okay. and that's just not, we're not. We're filming now. Okay, then I have to find the fucking, what is it? The powder. Because I'm greasy. You put powder on? Yeah, if I'm filming. Okay. And then. So hour 40. Hour 40. Hmm? Anything else? Aqua 4. I'll but I keep that, that one for but free. I keep that thing on me. Yeah, she she can go in the to go car. I don't think it takes this long. I think it does. <laughs> <laughs> I think it does, and the fact that you don't think it takes that long is what is <laughs> perturbing me. I'm perturbed. <laughs> I really think it takes me twenty minutes. I'm irked and perturbed because there's other people who feel that way who think, "Oh yeah, I'll be ready. I'll be right there," and it takes them. An hour and a half to get ready. And they act like they don't know that it takes an hour and a half. But I'm telling you, we don't know. I know. And I don't know why you don't know. Because we never timed ourselves. Even, it's just, I guess it's it's just the concept of time, right? It's just interesting because people don't have a concept of how long things take. No. <sighs> I just. I don't have that. I admitted it. I know. I don't get it. It's because like when, <laughs> Yeah. Mm-hmm. linearly mm-hmm. you know what i have to do actually to keep myself on time this is actually crazy what? of how much i just don't fuck with that bitch i have to put my it's like just so i can be on time to something if i'm going somewhere i put in the navigation like where i'm going and i watch it tell me my arrival time that's mm-hmm. how i know when i like really have to leave Mm. I don't do it like, oh, if it takes 10 minutes, because that I never actually know how long it's going to take. So I let it count me down Mm -hmm. with how long it's going to take. It is mind blowing to me, actually, especially for you, (laughs) because I feel like you're such a well-organized person in general. And it's really fascinating that time escapes you like that. How you can be so on top of so many things, but that one thing you can't can't handle it or can't seem to get a handle on it more so. Well, I don't think I'm built with the concept in me. It's fascinating. Well, I think there's a lot of things people aren't built to do that you figure out how to do. Well, I'm built for pretty much everything else. I can't fuck. I can't. I have no concept of time and I can't catch a ball good. Yeah. Those are it. Yeah. The rest, I could throw the ball. Yeah. So, just saying. Yeah. But I'm also not, I mean, you know. I'm curious for anyone who's watching this episode. (laughs) Tell me how long it takes you to get ready and tell me if you are aware. Of how long it takes you to get ready. I don't think people are aware how long I'm it curious takes. how many people really don't know. Because yeah. I just, I've, I've always had an idea of right. my own get ready time. And I, I truly am baffled sometimes. Right. When I'm sitting there waiting for certain people that I'm like, I feel like I had way more steps than you, but I did it like that. But do you think I took, like when I came in today, because mm-hmm. you were over, mm-hmm. I don't feel like I took that long. Did you think I took a long time? No. I didn't have to do my hair today. It didn't seem like you took that long at all. I think it's the hair. It could be the hair. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, listen, if I'm going to blow dry and straighten my hair, yeah, it's going to add to my time, but yeah. I don't do that every day. I think I'm realizing from this conversation that it's the hair. 
mm. more than anything else because I shaved and showered. Mm. Yeah. And I actually touched up the hair because it was a little messy, but mm-hmm. I didn't have to blow dry it. Like it wasn't mm-hmm. wet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, but I mean, I don't know. I also think some people are just quicker at things. And you've only been quick once in your life, so. When? <laughs> when was it? When you were born, silly. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to ask you earlier about why do you feel like it is that people feel comfortable putting their life stories out on the internet, particularly Facebook? Mm. I be reading the most sad cries for help right. on Facebook. Right. And I'm like really kind of wondering, I'm like, is it because Facebook is not as flashy as like an Instagram or a TikTok where you're, it's not your highlight reel maybe? Mm-hmm. And people feel like that's where they can go and dump their trauma. Right. I'm just curious if you have any thoughts on that. Because I read one recently from a girl who I used to work with. So I oh, don't know this girl that IRL well. The IRL one. Yes. Yeah. And it was like, I, funny enough, when I worked with her, it was like, it was a long time ago and she was super bubbly, super fun to work with, like, know her to be a great girl. But she posts this thing on Facebook where she basically was saying she's like selling all of her items because she can't pay her rent and has had thoughts of suicide since she was like nine years old and her girlfriend won't listen to her and broke up with her because she's too depressed and she's just like going through it. And I was like, wow. I was like, I just, I mean, you have to feel very, very vulnerable, I think. Or you're making yourself very vulnerable. I don't know. Either way. Right. It just is so interesting to me that that is a common thing, though. Right. That I think I've seen on Facebook. And, like, I like to go on. I know, like, a lot of millennials are, like, not really down for Facebook like that. But I like to go and just peek and, and be nosy. Right. So, like, I love it sometimes. I don't even like stuff. Like, I don't hard stuff. A lot of the time, I just be looking and scrolling and seeing, like, who's got whose babies and all right. that. Right. But... Nonetheless, I be getting a lot of these really depressed posts. Right. And I'm like, what is it about Facebook that feels like such a safe place? Because in fact, to me, it feels way more personal because these are all the people who know you for real. Right. And I'm like, I, like those, I don't know. I would be, I would be probably very shy about it. Well, I would say in her case, hers seems a little deeper than what I was going to say originally. Because like her seems like it's like a cry for help. Because of the ideation part. Like, I feel like if you're really at that point, sometimes, I mean, if if you're having like suicidal tendencies, I don't think a Facebook post of the cry for help is the worst of your worries, you know? Yeah. I think that in that instance, I could see her doing that because she probably wants somebody to help her or just something to like look forward to. Well, do you want to know the worst part about this story? I do. Is her girlfriend commented on the post. And they started beefing in the comments about their, like, relationship. Like, I was there for you. I called you. I did this, this, and that. So how are you going to sit here and try to act like I didn't listen to you? I listened to you. Why are you deleting my comments? Why are you deleting the stuff that I put on? The- They're going back and forth on this post. And I'm like, okay. whoa. All right, I'm going to backtrack. Mm-hmm. People are crazy. <laughs> The truth of what I was going to say is there's a lot of people out there whose biggest value set is A, attention, or B, sympathy. People Mm. love it, okay? Mm. People love sympathy. I would actually say more than attention. Mm. I think people are like, oh, you want attention. It's not that. It's sympathy. And it could be innate. It could be deep-rooted in uh, family family traumas, getting raised a certain way, birth order perhaps. Mm. It's a lot of factors that go into it, but... Mm -hmm. I think the only thing is if if you're uh, putting yourself out there, you're hoping for a reaction from somebody. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you can control what the reaction is, mm-hmm. but I have to say she probably enjoyed that she got her girlfriend's attention. Could be. You know what I mean? It could be. You ain't talking about somebody online thinking they're not going to respond, right? Yeah. And I, I honestly, it might have been at a point where like the girlfriend wasn't even talking to her at all. And this is what got her to respond a- at all. Possible. Publicly. So it could be. On the other end, I was on her side in a sympathy way for a second. <laughs> now you got me thinking she's really manipulative. Oof. And that whole thing was a ploy. Because Oof. there's certain things you can say that's going to get people to react. It's just unfortunate that we'll never, we'll never know. 
I'm yeah. like, you know, people just be putting that stuff out there. You know what I do wish they would put out there though? What? You know, Facebook has the whole thing where you can put on like, oh, is now in a relationship with so-and-so. Oh. I think they need to create the breakup alternative of that. Oh. And people need to post their breakups because I can't keep up. No, why are people always hiding their breakups? I don't know, but it's also yeah. really confusing for the outsiders. If you're telling me that you're in a relationship and then next thing I see you with somebody else. No, but they had that. You remember? It used to be on Facebook. It would say change their relationship status to single. Oh, like, you're it would right. Say that. You're right. We need that on Instagram and we need that on TikTok. Yeah. Like, it should say in your bio single. Yes. Or in relationship with. Yeah. Yeah. I think, and then, I mean, no longer in a relationship with would also be helpful for us who need to play catch up. Right. Like, in the same way that they have your work history, I would like to see your dating history. Right. No, no. And then, you know what? I, I, I totally respect the people who, like, just don't post their significant others at all. Like, that's kind of who I am, I think. Mm -hmm. Like, deep down, I'm like, maybe here and there, but, like, really, it's going to just not. It's, it'll be between us. Mm -hmm. But other people, <laughs> my favorite is the ones who overpost. All the captions are, like, a paragraph about them. And then, like, mm -hmm. one day you're just, like, looking, and you're like, hmm, I feel like I haven't seen that person for a minute. And then you go on there, and you just notice everything's gone. And then yes. you're like, it's always the ones who always act like they're the most in love. Yeah. Of those volatile splits. I mean, that's, I definitely say, see yeah. that as a pattern. Yeah. The ones who end up with the messy relationships and or end up with somebody completely removed from the picture are the ones who love to brag about how great that person yeah. was. Yeah, what is that? I think it's like, I think if you feel the need to parade your relationship, it's not giving substance for me. Like, mm. it's like if you are really solid in your relationship, right? Why does everyone else need to know about it? Yeah, it why is, do you have to talk about it? Why do they have to know about it? Like, you want somebody to know you found somebody? Are you like that excited about it? Did you not think you were going to? Did you not think like I don't know what the reason is? Well, it could be too because like a lot of people's biggest value set is uh, their relationship. You know, like yeah. if you had to rank like job, happiness, relationship, like whatever. Like some people's ultimate goal. Like it's like the type of people who are like you're single and they're constantly be like you'll find somebody one day and you're just like I'm fine. Like I'm not feeling bad about it. Yeah, but their brain goes there. Maybe it's I just think, that's, that's it. And I think, well, to add to that, I do think a lot of people find worth, like self-worth in, in their partner and in their relationship. But it might not even be like specifically in their partner. It might be literally just because they're in a relationship. No, they feel valued. Totally, because you, somebody loves you. Somebody wants right. you. And like maybe the person that they're with actually doesn't value them. So the fact that they're in a relationship externally shows that they have value. So that's why they're posting about it. Yeah. And, and people I mean, like the facade. I was going to say, people post on social media anyways just because of the fact that they feel like they need to like show people right. how dope their life is. Right. So maybe part of that is if you feel like you're in a dope relationship, then you want to show that too. Right. But I don't know. I guess I've just always felt like relationships should be more private. And I think the reason I feel that way is because I don't like when other people talk about my relationship or interject in my relationship. Mm. So I don't want to put it out there right. for people to like see all the time because I don't want people to feel like they're entitled to any sort of an opinion on my relationship. Right. Well, you're private. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I just think like, that's good. I mean, I think it's it saves you a lot of hassle. Yeah. And also, like, I don't know. I think it's really important to not feel like your worth is tied up in your relationship. Like, you have to be a person. Yeah. I don't know. And it's not, I mean, not to say like, hey, if it's that person's birthday or if you want to share a little like, Oh my gosh, I'm so uh, proud of this person for their accomplishment. Like, yeah. I'm I'm here for that. But like, in terms of just like, oh my goodness. Like, we know. We all know we those know. people. Yeah, I don't actually even oh, care gosh. if like your partner is a frequenter. It's just like, it's like you got to be on vacation or like, it's got to be like a right, selfie. We're just and out not, there doing not stuff. Not like directly about them. Right. That's and not the about part. the love. Yeah. Like, you don't need to brag about your love. Oh my God, if you just posted each other and been like so in love as the caption... Or I can't. I can't. It's not. It's it's not normal. I feel. No, it's crazy. Yeah. I'm like, I just. It makes me look yeah. a little bit. Yeah, we can make a checklist. Birthdays are okay. Mm -hmm. Promotions or accomplishments are okay. Mm -hmm. Vacations. Vacations. Mm -hmm. You can't say, but vacations, but you can't say so in love. <laughs> <laughs> Anniversaries, good. Yeah. Children, okay. Mm -hmm. The birthing. And you can do the birthdays mm -hmm. and you can post little pictures. Like if they like were in a baseball team or something, mm -hmm. that is okay. Mm -hmm. 
What else? Oh, and if they die. That's all. Yes. But that's it. <laughs> <laughs> that's all. That's all we want to see. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. We do want to see one more thing. We want to add. If you break up, please do a post. Yes. I actually yeah. love the celebrities, especially who do that, because obviously yeah. we are so invasive in right. celebrities' lives. Or like the YouTubers. Or like anybody, like, like you know, we've sadly made the decision to uncouple oh, or whatever. Yeah. Like, I love those posts. <laughs> and it's like kind of a weird thing, but I just like love that it's like you're really taking back your narrative. Right. Because of course people have thoughts and opinions on what they think went down. Right. Some people are questioning whether or not it's true. And you're just kind of shutting everybody up like, yeah, but real quick. I feel like people... Like, if I was in that situation and I felt like we need to post about the uncoupling to control the narrative, mm -hmm. I just know some trifling shit went down. Mm. Somebody was cheating for sure. Or embezzling. Mm. Something of the nature. Because that's the only way I'd want to control the narrative. Because mm. if not, I don't know why I would care what people are saying. If, yeah. I, if I knew nothing actually went down. I just feel like I wonder if those same celebrities, if they said nothing would be getting constant questions about it. And it's like, I'm going to just go ahead and tell y'all real quick, yes, we broke up and it's done. Like, I'm going to just let you know. And that's it. Maybe, but like at the same time, I'm like, stories, especially a breakup in the public eye at this point, I'm like, what is that going to be? Two weeks? Like, nobody cares after that, you know? That's fair. Like, nothing lasts Stuff, that news, long. News recycles so quickly. Yeah, it does. Even, yeah. even like I feel like controversies and like people are like apologizing for things and stuff. And I'm like, I just genuinely like half of them are like, this would blow over in a week anyways. Sure. But to my other point, it's like if you're somebody that like maybe you haven't seen them in a while and you're like, oh, how's so-and-so? And, -so? and you get, don't know? No. Next thing you're like, oh, I'm embarrassed. And you could have just told me that y'all broke up. <laughs> no, I know. That's the worst when you ask. And then they're like, oh, we're actually not together. Yeah. Oh, we're not together anymore. And you're like. <sighs> Yeah, I don't even ask anymore. I've learned. I think I've ran into that situation too many times. And now I'm just like, how are you doing? No, I mean, listen, that's like almost as bad as asking about, you know, how far along are you? That's worse, but yeah. Yeah. Still bad. Still bad. <laughs> Still bad nonetheless. <laughs> yes. Wow. Well, should we do our little seggy? Yes. Let's do we it. We shall. Cancel me combo. Cancel me combo is a silly little term that describes the healthy debate of a mildly or extremely controversial subject wherein daddy and mommy participate in the beloved practice of rock, paper, scissors to select sides and then proceed to argue in favor of their signed position regardless of their personal beliefs. Disclaimer, neither daddy nor mommy are legally permitted to be canceled from these conversations. All right, so what's today's topic? <sighs> okay, today's topic is should there be such a thing as an adults only flight? As in a flight where no children are allowed on board. Hmm. I don't know if we want to make an age, set an age on that, like 12 and under or like... No, I think like, it's probably 18, right? Oh, yeah. When can you go to an adult's yeah. only resort? You have to be yeah, 18. You 18. might have to be 21. I think most 18? places it's 18 because I think the drinking age is 18 in okay, most countries. Okay, let's say 18 and up flight. Okay. Okay. this isn't sexual. No, this isn't like adults only as in like adults only. Like, yeah. nah, no, you really just have to no. be like an a, on like paper a, yeah. adult. Like an adults only resort. Age appropriate. It's just no screaming. Yeah. Period. And drinking is allowed. Right. For everyone, really, at that point. Anyone could order a drink on that flight. Oop, well, let me stop. That was a great point. Only if you're 18. Hmm? If you're 18, you can't. In certain countries. Period. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay. Okay. Rock, paper, scissors. Flip. If you win, yes, we should enforce this. If right. you lose, no. Uh, everyone should be allowed on planes. Okay. Okay. Ready? Ready. Rock, Rock paper, paper, scissors, shoot. Rock, Rock paper, paper, scissors, shoot. Okay. okay. So mine is, no, everybody's allowed. Yeah. And yours is, cut them off. <laughs> yeah. Okay, go ahead. Okay. How many times have you been on a plane and you've thought to yourself, somebody shut that kid up? <laughs> <laughs> I hate to say it, but it's true. We've all been there. And I've, I've definitely sympathized with all the mothers out there because I know it can't be easy controlling children on a plane. That being said, new concept, ring-a-ding-ding-ding-ding, adults-only flights. Imagine if when you go to book your flight, you can choose the option to book on a flight that only has adults. No screaming children. You don't have to listen to any crying, no fighting, no annoying teenagers. Like, it's just a free for all, all the adults. 
to be with other adults. I feel like there's also the opportunity at that point. You're assuming everybody's of age. Why not pass out complimentary drinks to everyone? Because at that point, you can. You don't have to worry about, oh, is this person of age? Is this person able to do it? Blah, 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 blah. Everybody's of age. If you feel like you want to maybe offer only adult movies, ooh, scandal, but also fun, you could. Everyone's of age. You could do all sorts of things on adults only flights that I think would be totally acceptable, minus, I don't know, people's comfort levels. <laughs> but like at the same time, I just think that with children, I think it would also maybe be helpful. Like by the same token, you could have you know, kid-friendly flights. Maybe it's like a la Disney Cruise where you can, you know, offer fun things on the plane that will maybe keep kids entertained. I think right now, because there's no separation, everybody just kind of has to deal with everybody. But if you were to give the option of doing adults only or kids only, well, you can't do kids only at five of the parents. But if you were given the option to do adults only, I do think that it would be something that a lot of people would be willing to pay for. And I think people would be excited to travel more, especially like on those late, late flights early morning flights, the last thing you want to hear is crying. I hate to say it, but it's true. And then it's like, you get to relax. You get to relax, have peace and quiet, make it to wherever you're trying to make it. No fuss. And I think maybe that would be helpful for parents as well to know that, you know, you're not going to have some weirdo staring at you crazy because your baby's crying. You know, you can just accept, hey, listen, if you wanted peace and quiet, you should have booked an adult only flight. Something to think about. Mm. Mm -hmm. All right, my turn for normal mm. flights. <laughs> it's so much to say about it. Okay. Airlines are now rolling out adults only flights. For no extra charge, there's now going to be planes that are only for adults. Now, I have to say, although that sounds like a nice idea, I feel like it, mostly it's just a dig to parents because I feel like it's hard enough to get from point A to point B. It's, and it's hard enough having kids every freaking day. So now on top of it, if somebody who can't get on one of these adult-only flights ends up on your flight, you're already paranoid enough that your child's been crying. Like nobody likes that. Even more so the parent hates it because it's embarrassing and you can't control the situation because you can't say anything to your kid in public. <laughs> you don't want to be freaking painted out in a negative light. So you got to let them cry. And then everybody's looking at you and they're going to be rolling their eyes thinking, fuck, I wish I was on the adults only flight right now. <laughs> and you're sitting here being like, listen, I wish I was too. But you know what they didn't roll out? They didn't roll out a Nickelodeon flight. They didn't roll out a Disney flight. And in fact, if they did, they'd make you pay a lot more. So the thing about it is it's, it's just another way to enforce kind of, I hate to say it, ageism in society. Because... Once again, for some reason, people have, they really struggle to hold the concept that children are also people. And maybe the reason that children crying bothers people is because they haven't cried in years because they've bottled up trauma <laughs> and aren't able to release that and get that out. And the, the sound of children's tears is actually enforcing the fact that they have things they need to work through with therapy. And instead, they're upset and they're trying to get on these adults only flights. So they can drink liquor instead of going to a licensed professional to talk about their emotions. And it really is just bringing out a lot of things that just don't need to be brought out. I think it's a goofy concept in general. I actually am very curious. W would you take an adults-only flight? Um, let me know in the comments. Period. Period. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you listening, that's how you do it. <laughs> yeah. Slay. Yeah. You know, well done. Thank you. Yeah. No, honestly, I, I sympathize heavy with parents. I actually feel really bad usually. Me too. It's like, it's definitely not your fault if your kid is crying on a plane. No. You're you freaking could, cooped up. Yeah. I know the pressure bothers kids' ears and like, yeah. especially for babies that can't even talk. Yeah. You hit an age where you start sympathizing with them. Like, I used to be like, oh my God, why even bring them? You know? know, like when I was probably as a teenager. When you see people shoot those nasty, no, nasty and now looks. I'm like the opposite. Like, if a kid starts screaming, like, I almost want to go to the parent and be like, it's fine. No, right? Yeah. Can I buy you it's a fine. drink? Yeah. <laughs> I know we can't help it, but mm -hmm. I'm like, you got to get from point A to point B. No, yeah. What are you going to do? I'm also the queen of like, oh, let me try to entertain your baby. Yeah. Like, while well, it's freaking out. <laughs> you are, you're a baby tainer. 
Yeah, basically. <laughs> basically. Yeah. But yeah, no, I feel really bad for parents. I think it must be really hard, especially if you have to carry like a stroller and a car seat and all that traveling with all that stuff. Seems like so much. No, I even like, listen, I struggle just traveling with my dogs. Mm-hmm. And I, because like sometimes like, you know, they make them put, go in a carrier or, like under the seat. And if I put the special one in there, like she got a real attitude, mm. you know? So I got to stick my <laughs> hand in the bag and then she'll be like, ah! in there and i'm like if the dog's making sound and i feel like that un- uneasy yeah i can't even imagine how i'd feel with like three kids just like rummaging about screaming right. now when you understand my parents do the most yeah. when it comes to packing for a yeah. flight you're like yeah. we need all the snacks all the entertainment yeah. everything but you know actually recently when i went to hawaii i had the, the exact opposite situation it was terrible mm-hmm. so on the way there i had this it was weirdly the whole entire family was sitting in my section Mm -hmm. and i had the little boy and the dad behind me Mm -hmm. and the the kid was like literally doing nothing like he'd like kick his foot or something for one second or be like talking to his brother and the whole entire flight for five hours the dad was like shut up stop this i'm gonna like that like really crazy like i actually genuinely i was like concerned for the kid and the fact that like the whole family was like doing that shit was like really weird Mm. and i was like sitting there in my head i was like does he not realize that he's more annoying than the kid by 10 times and i've never like wanted to turn around except i was like this man seems violent as hell Mm. like i was like not trying to get into him but i was like genuinely concerned for the kid yeah and then you know what the craziest part is Mm. he was behind me on the flight back no. Yeah. The whole the same family twice. We were on the same flight there and back. Oh my goodness. Yes. Yeah. And wow. then the weirdest part, the second they plan landed, they were like so bubbly. Huh. Like even the it was like the sister or the aunt or whatever, like on the way there was like talking to us about um her dog and like being the sweetest lady and then gets on the plane is just a total devil woman. <laughs> <laughs> genuine Yikes. genuine devil woman. Yikes. Yeah. And you know what was crazy? Like huh? The way back, I kind of feel bad about this, but at the same time, I don't. Mm-hmm. I saw them like outside and I was like, these bitches are on our flight again. I like made a joke about it before, about how much I would hate that. And then the flight people, I was thinking in my head, I was like, I've never been called by like, you know, they'll be like, Blank Palmer, please come to the front desk or yeah. whatever. I was like, what? I always wonder what they're really calling people for. Yeah. And then they called my name and I went up and they're like, hey, like this family asked if we can, they want to all sit together, can we switch seats with you? And I said, mm. fuck no. I saw them and I was like, hell no, I'm not <laughs> doing anything for them. Yeah. Yeah. Especially because I was in the first row where you get like the leg room and you don't have like somebody in front of you. Mm-hmm. I was like, I strategically picked that seat. Right. And put the dollars down. Right. I ain't trying to sit in the one where I got to. Oh, that's a good cancel me for another day. Yeah. Like, should you get up for someone yeah. on a plane? Because I do think that that's a big one. Some people are like, nah. No, I'm totally the the per any other seat I would move. I don't care. It's mm-hmm. just if, if I get the first seat of the section and mm-hmm. you don't have the back, I love that seat. Some people hate it because you can't have your stuff there. Right. I love it. Love it. I love it so much. Period. But yeah. Anyways, it was really, it was really nice getting out of this freaking cold, going over there to a little bit warmer. Oh yeah. Yeah, I've been freezing my yitties off. <laughs> Did you know I I heard that it's supposed to be like an actually long winter this year. And like an extra long winter? Yeah, extra long bad winter this year. No. Yeah, and it's because of the bees. The bees have been acting different. So they went into like their like winter hibernation seven weeks early this year, which is like kind of unheard of. Mm. And we got to follow the bees. Yeah. And they've been kicking the drones out, which is like the worker bees, you know? Oh. So they're like out. Oh, they're probably dead now Oh. at this point. And then instead, I guess usually like in the beehives, they like stockpile honey in like different sections. So it's like everybody's eating during the winter because they don't really go out because like obviously they're going to freeze to death. Yeah. But apparently the bees behavior right now is they're stockpiling all the honey by the queen. Mm. And this is like very common right now in Mm. in bee behavior, which Mm. is the prediction of like that they know that this winter is going to be deep and go for a while. So they have to act in a certain way. Yeah. Bee culture. Bee culture. Huh. Yeah, the bees know. Wow. Listen to the bees. Take care of the bees, man. Save the bees. Yeah, so anyways, bundle up, y'all. And if you're thinking about buying that jacket, buy it. Good to know. This is what I've heard. Good to know. And that's today's weather report. (laughs) (laughs) Anyways, but the good news is we have some heat and missile songs to warm you up. (laughs) Some heaters are on the way. We have some heaters on the way. Love it. We're excited. 
um, to be releasing this project, and it'll be coming out January 1st. And if you're listening to this before then, you know, just know we started a new account. It's called Daddy Mommy Music. That's right. We wanted to just be Daddy Mommy, but somebody took that. We're going to have to pay a f- probably a hefty fee to get that back at some point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, but so, for now. Yeah. Daddy Mommy Music on everything. Mm-hmm. You can go on Spotify and Apple, just Daddy Mommy. Mm-hmm. Ages up. Mm-hmm. Give us a follow. Mm-hmm. And be uh, looking forward to it. And yeah. We have, a, we have a big content rollout. Yeah, we do. Yeah, yeah we, we do. do. And we're excited for you guys to hear it. Yes. And if you guys actually genuinely, if you have any questions about how this project came out or you want to hear us talk about anything specific about it on the pod, please message us. Let us know. Let us know what you want. Yeah. 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 And with that, ciao. Ciao, Bella. (laughs) 